Well, welcome everybody to yet another episode of the Dad Hat Chronicle Sports Show. My name is Ed, and with me, I got my awesome co-host, Stadium Food Girl Val. How you doing today, girl? Hi, happy Monday! I'm so excited to be on. Oh, I'm excited because as uh, we are about to speak with someone who their team just released an amazing as at the time of this recording, right? Just released an amazing hat, an amazing video. So we'll talk about that. Uh, but with me, with us today, we got Mike. Uh, you, Mike, um, I'm going to go ahead and tell say your your title because this is an awesome title and I like it just because of what you do. Sure. But you are the director and buyer of merchandise for the Lehigh Valley Iron Pig. How are you today, my friend? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me on. This is so exciting. I uh, really appreciate it. Thank you. Are you kidding me? I mean, Lehigh Valley has been one of those teams where like that in minor league baseball that you know they're always going to come up with some fire merchandise. There's just, it, there's no doubt about it. You know that some, every year you guys are going to come up with at least 15,000, you know, great stuff out there. So I love it, man. Thank you. Really appreciate that. A lot of hard work goes into it. So I appreciate you saying that. Thank you. Well, well, we'll and we'll get into it. So we're going to get into it. Sure. So let me, uh, we'll start by, um, you know, like how, th- how did you get into the business of minor league baseball? I got in the weirdest way possible. <laughs> uh, the probably the, one of the unluckiest but luckiest ways. Uh, I was actually a store manager for the Disney stores. Um, you remember the Disney stores back in the day? Uh, I was there for, um, about 22 years. Uh, loved it there. It was great. I was a big Disney guy. Uh, but then they started closing down the stores. It was that time where mall business was just dying. Disney was in those malls and just looking a way to get out. So they were just closing stores left and right. And it was holiday 2017. Uh, I got the notice that we're going to be closing your store. Um, January, you're going to be out of a job, unfortunately. So I was just like, oh, wow. After this many years, what am I going to do? I mean, my previous job before that, I was at Blockbuster Video. Oh my god! <laughs> Think about that. Like I, I had a job at Blockbuster for like half, like six months, and that if that's it, you know, yeah, it's crazy. Like last time I had an interview, <laughs> people were renting DVDs and VHSs at Blockbuster Video. What am I gonna do? So I was, I was talking to my wife Lisa. I was like, you know what? I don't know where I'm gonna go. And she's like, Well, what are you passionate about? I'm like, Oh, I love baseball. And I was like, You know what? Let me see if the Iron Pigs are hiring. I went on the Iron Pigs website. They were hiring. So it was just dumb luck. Uh, three weeks later, uh, I was I was unemployed for three weeks, and I started at the Iron Pigs in February. So it was just extremely lucky. I don't have a sports management degree. I didn't go through all that process. But what I do have is a lot of transferable skills and a really keen knowledge of especially merchandising. So that's why I think uh, Kurt Landis, my GM, took a chance on me, and I've been running with it. Uh, yeah, I mean, merchandising. I mean, come on. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so what was the first, your first, uh, like job there when you started with, uh, with, uh, Lehigh? It was the position I'm in right now. The director of merchandise in the wow. back. I was just like thrown into it and they're like, all right, here, figure it out. So, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and there was definitely a learning curve. It took a little while and you know, I leaned on some of the other experts in the field, like, uh, Brian at Durham. And Craig at Toledo, um, talked with them pretty often. And I would say it took me a good season to really be like, okay, I think I have this. I have this figured out. Um, and I'd say I've been running great ever since then, too. So, so you know, it's it's wild to me to just like, because I actually spoke with Brian of, uh, of Durham, right? Okay. And awesome guy. Love that guy, right? I mean, that guy has been doing it for a long time, too, right over there, down there in Durham. Yeah. And and like you, he does come back, come from a background in merchandise and like, you know, store manager and all that stuff. And and it's like, it, it's crazy. It was like, oh, you know, I don't have a, a sports degree, but you have, like you said, transferable skills that can, that really does transfer really well for uh, merchandising. Right, exactly. And like, just knowing 
like that customer service aspect of it and listening to customers um, and just knowing like what kind of specialty merchandise that people like and just really using merchandising skills, um, I was able to find success pretty quickly because of that. Uh, that's super interesting that you say that. I I merchandise, but for an e-commerce website. So I'm interested, like, how do stores like you read the analytics to know how to merchandise? It's is it like, is tie-dye your guys' thing? You just look at reports to see if dad hats are selling better than fitteds, and then you move those to the front? Sure. Um, you know, it's it's interesting because we, we have – our store has two entrances, really, if you think about it. We have the entrance that's in the parking lot that's primarily used in non-game day time. And then we'll close that. And then during the game, we have the other entrances from the concourse. So it's important to try to merchandise whatever you think is your key items or your, your hot items or which, whatever you feel is what's new. So it's it's almost like constantly flipping things back and forth. Mm, okay. uh, when it comes to like doing a theme night, then it's easy. You, know, you yeah. put that theme night right there in the front. So everyone can see it um, when it's just like regular type merchandise. You kind of just go to the tried and trues and see what's, you know, what's out there. Um, find inspiration wherever you might go. Like I'll go to the mall. I'll walk around the mall and be like, all right, let's see what's, what's going on in, in lids. What have they got? Like, oh, wow, that looks cool. We can do that. Or, or I'll listen to the dad hat podcast. And be like, what are these guys like? Like, oh, okay. Yeah, maybe I'll do some of those things. So, you know, just trying to find inspiration wherever you go. You go you go to a circus, go look at the merch, you know, see what it is, see what people are buying, and just find inspiration wherever you may go. Very cool. Yeah. That's that first of all, thank you for listening. Um <laughs> but it, it, it is interesting because Right. Obviously, I'm a fan of the dad head itself, but I also I mean, I love that. I'm literally as we're talking, I'm on your website right now, you know, like looking at, at your has looking at the merchandise. And what I really do appreciate about the Iron Picks is uh, the different theme nights. Right. You guys mm -hmm. are catering to different subset groups, you know, that you have uh, within your community and um, like. How, how obviously, with because you guys have to go within the construct of my, uh, Major League Baseball, right? So there is some rules and regulations you guys have to follow in advance. Um, how, how has that changed from what you used to do before to now? Obviously, because you guys are one of the top teams that, you know, you guys are releasing a lot of theme nights. Yeah. Well, we'll generally, we'll come up with an idea that we think is fun or that's going to mm -hmm. resonate with people. And from that idea, we'll we'll get the, the art done. We'll we'll speak with graphic design artists. Uh, we use Brandios a lot. We do a mm -hmm. lot of in house, and we use a, a Fooser. And at that point, then we'll submit it to MLB, and then they'll tell us what they like or don't like. And mm -hmm. you know, we, we've done it enough that we're kind of think we know what they're gonna approve. Sometimes there's some surprises and some <laughs> some questionable things on red tape, but we usually can work it through with our partners with MLB. Uh, but first and foremost, we just think, what is fun? What, what's going to resonate with people? What's going to catch their eye? And then from there, we just kind of go. That's awesome. Because uh, I'm definitely looking at your uh, Shoe Fly Pie uh, <laughs> logo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Shoe Fly Pie is a big Pennsylvania Dutch contingency or history in Lehigh Valley. Um, blocks away, there was like one of the premier Pennsylvania Dutch restaurants back in the day. It's no longer there anymore. It's a Wawa gas station, which still has great food. But, yeah, what? <laughs> but we knew that that history was there. So we wanted to pay homage to the Pennsylvania Dutch. And we've done it several times from the shoe fly pie. We've done Fosh Knot. We've done Scrapple. I mean, even our uh, Saturday uniforms are now um, hex design uh, Pennsylvania Dutch. So a way to connect to the community um, is a really good way to not only drive sales, but tickets and uh, sponsorship and just to bring people out and just to show people, you know, we're about fun. And something that I love about you guys, uh, when it comes to, and, and I know I'm going to, I'm very happy with this is like, but your Copa brand, you have two different Copas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Right. Obviously you got the Coquise that's, you know, near and dear to my heart, right. You know, as, as being <laughs> Puerto Rican. So I'm like, yes, let's go, you know. Uh, but then you guys have uh, the Mama Juana, which is for the Dominican side of uh, the the population there. Like, w were you guys 
purposefully, you know, able, wanted to do those two things as well. Uh, how did that come about? Well, you know, to begin with, when MILB wanted to do this promotion and this um, awareness mm -hmm. uh, doing the Copa and Hispanic Heritage Nights, the very first one we did was uh, we're like, oh, we're Iron Pigs. It'll be fun. Let's be Tocino. Uh, mm -hmm. we're, we're bacon, which was easy. Uh, yeah. And it didn't sell because it didn't really connect to anybody. Yep. So after that is when we're like, all right, let's look at the Hispanic uh, culture here in our area. What makes it up? It's like, all right, it's predominantly Puerto Rican. Mm -hmm. Let's talk to the community. What that's important to the Puerto Rican community. And that's when yeah. the coqui was like, all right, what what's a coqui? Uh, well, the reps are like, it's kind of like the bald eagle of America. Like mm -hmm. everyone knows a coqui. I'm like, well, why don't we do that? So that's when we did a coqui and it did very well. Um, and then we did that for two years, I believe. And then, then we're like, why are we limiting ourselves to, to only one? Let's do two. What else makes up the, the Lehigh Valley? And we, it's like, oh, Dominican. So the same thing. We brought in uh, some representatives from the Dominican um, Historical Society. Talked to them what was important. A lot of it was like plantains. I was like, eh, there's so many banana identities out there. We're going yeah. to do that. Um, and then when we heard about Mama Juana, and everything that's behind Mama Juana, uh, like, yeah, we, let's run with this. So it was purposeful then to expand that. I think we might be the only team that does too. Um, yeah. I, as far as like, I mean, some people have done rebrands mm -hmm. of uh, Copa, but you guys have done two different um, ones, which is, you know, which is pretty cool. Uh, yeah. And and for, for people that don't know that uh, Cookie is, is literally very small, a frog. I mean, it is extremely small and it makes a sound every night, you know, around like as soon as that seven o'clock night hits in Puerto Rico, you'll hear it. And it's, you'll, it's everywhere. So like, I recommend everybody to hear, listen to that sound. And then obviously the Mahon is a drink, yeah. uh, is a drink in the Dominican. Uh, so you guys definitely got to take a look at that as well. So. I love that logo, the Mama Mama Juana logo. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I'm looking at it right now, and it's so cute with the glasses carrying the tree. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right? <laughs> yeah, he's a cute little guy. We might do some reimagining of him in the future. Um, I kind of think some of the colors might blend in a little too much. But, yeah, he's, he's a very cute guy, very popular, and uh, everyone loves that guy. People are just... A lot of people are like, is it a drug? What what is this? Yeah. <laughs> like, no, it's not. It's not any illegal substances. <laughs> and we, we sell, tell the story of what Mama Juan is, and people kind of get it. I'm like, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. I got you. Okay. All right. All right. Then you know, yeah. that's pretty cool. Although I I have to say I would not, and I wish. And if there's still merch left over in the store from it, I'm your girl. I would have not been upset about that Tocino logo. Okay. Um. Oh wait, you said that you guys didn't go through with it. Oh, we did it. Oh, here. you did it. Okay, yeah. okay, and that it didn't do too well. I'm a I'm in love with that because one of my favorite Iron Pigs logos is the strip of bacon, just so oh. simple, Thank or the you. fighting bacon. I don't know. It's, I love when it's a food concept. So yeah, and we take great pride in in telling everyone and reminding everyone we were the very first team to do a food identity. That yeah. bacon was the very first food, <laughs> and now everyone does it, which is great. You know. But yeah, that bacon strip, that's still there. It's on our road uniform now, on our Aww. road cap. And uh, the fighting bacon is on our batting practice cap, and we use them for other things as well, too. Love it. You guys are going to cost me a lot of money, because every time <laughs> I go to this website, you know what I mean? You're like, oh, there's another one that I want. Yeah. Uh, so it's like, because uh, I've had the uh, Space Savers. I got that hat. Okay, thank you. You were oh, the yeah. guy. You were the guy. Oh, yeah. I got, you know. <laughs> I got that guy. You know what I mean? So, you know, then obviously uh, as far as uh, other kinds of merchandise, what do you guys usually like is your one of your biggest like uh, besides hats? Like obviously everybody will collect a hat. But like besides that, what else you guys collect? I mean, sell that you guys are like that's your main uh, staple there. Uh, you know, sweatshirts, T-shirts, that kind of stuff is generally our bread and butter. Um, souvenir baseballs, those types of things. But mm -hmm. we're by far, it's hats. We're shipping hats every single day, 40, 30 packages a day. That's going to be hats. Uh, but a lot of t-shirts as well, too. Uh, sweatshirts do very well, especially when we have early games. Uh, 
uh, everyone jokes in the stadium. I'm I'm the only one who enjoys cold games because we sell a lot of sweatshirts. Well, yeah, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so sweatshirt hoodies, those are very popular as well too. Oh man, that's awesome. Um, so I see here, and and then we'll move into other things about uh, the team and everything. But I see you are doing a pre-order for a pretty cool logo, the Space Pigs. Okay. Yeah, the Space Pigs. That one's a really unique one in that that wasn't even our idea. It was Rochester who was going to be in uh, ground zero for the Eclipse back when they were going to be playing against us. So they wanted to do a game where they were the moon rocks. Mm-hmm. And playing against us, they had an idea like, hey, why don't we incorporate it and you guys can be the Space Pigs. So they really spearheaded that which was amazing for us because we didn't have to do much of the, the legwork. We, we did so many approval and they did like almost all of the, uh, the legwork in the beginning. So um, that was really cool when they did that. So we do have the jerseys, we have the hats. Uh, if it's listed at pre-order, I got to update that because they just came in last week. Oh. So um, we're ready to go with those. But yeah, that was, that was a unique one. Man, I love that gray. It's almost like a slate. And yeah. that pink looks so good on it. Yeah, it really pops on there, and uh, it's cool. Like you're using the pink color on it on the on the hats for the brim. Oh, mm-hmm. oh my god! <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, it used to be oh pink. Oh, we can't do pink. Like you can do it as much as you want. Who now, cares? But, yeah, exactly. I don't care. I mean, God's sakes, my daughter makes me they wear it like this thing. You know, right? <laughs> so that's cool, though. Like, I mean. How important is it, you know, and how much do you rely on um, working with other teams as far as like, you know, you know, collaborating with other teams? Uh, we very rarely, we very mm-hmm. rarely will do that. We, you know, we're thinking primarily mostly about us and our fans. Yeah. Um, I think there was something, it was in the past 10 years with the, the Mud Hens where we did a bacon and eggs game where we had a hat with the bacon on it and an egg on the other side of it. That was a while ago. Um, so it's been a while since we've done any kind of thing like that. This thing with Rochester is probably since, uh, I don't think we've done anything in like the last seven years, eight years since we did anything with them. So it's very rare that we will. I know Val is like, I wish I would have had that bacon and egg. I know, I'm thinking you, <laughs> oh. said while, you said a while ago. I'm like, so how long ago? <laughs> it was it was before my time, so probably ten years ago, I would think. eBay, be, eBay. Uh, eBay right. yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I was like, I am looking for this one right now. <laughs> Mike, I have a question. So it seems like uh, I, I know earlier you said it's got to go off to MLB before anything is official, but it seems like you guys are allowed to have a lot of fun with creating these logos and these identities and whatnot. How yeah. often, because it, it's got to be so hard not to be like, all right, uh, Tuesday, new logo, let's think of it. Wednesday, let's think of another one. Thursday, let's think of another one, right? Like, I'd be like, all right, we need 80 more logos. <sighs> How often do you guys get together for a new logo? Um, it's it's quite the process. It really is. Um, and we work so far in advance. Uh, I kid you not, today we discussed our new five logos for next year and when they're going to be releasing. (laughs) So we already planned that out. Um, But as far as when do we start, we usually, you know, we'll look at MLB will give us timelines or, and we'll think about like, all right, we need to have something by this date. But my, my GM has a uh, whiteboard with out to like 2027. Like, why don't we do this this year? Why don't we do this this, that year? And we'll go back and revisit that uh, pretty often. I bet those meetings are so fun. It is. It is a lot of fun. And uh, seeing it come to life after planning it for a year and a half, like today, bringing out the, the Bethlehem Star logo. Is a, oh, yeah. It's so satisfying when the public really enjoys it and sees it and, like, just are floored by it. And it's like all that hard work. It's like having a baby, you know, <laughs> nine months later. <laughs> Like, here you go. It's like you waited so long to have it, and you're yeah. like, hey, there it is. Yeah. But yeah, literally 2025, I know everything we're going to do. We've seen all the logos. They're ready to go. So oh, wow. we're going to be starting on 2026 pretty soon. I know, Val. I'm like, oh, I want to see all of them for 2025 <laughs> already. Graphic design, art, 
art museums, all that. Not really my thing, but in this case, I would love to like just hang out with the graphic designer and just see like how they put it all together on their MacBook or whatever they use and then just see the finished product. That's so cool. Yeah, and it is quite the process. We'll give them the idea and graphic design or we'll come back with what they want to show us. And we're like, mm, you know, that's not quite what we were thinking. Let's change this. Let's change that. Let's see another go. And it's it could be six, seven, eight rounds of back and forth until we really get it down right. We're very particular in that. Wow. So cool. I was just going to say, it's like, so, right. So do you, you've worked with Ryan Foos, which by the way, I mean, great stuff, you know, brand deals, great stuff, you know, um, that like that back and forth, like, you know, they're, I'm sure they're very receptive to like, you know, what you guys are asking for and bring, you know, going back and forth. Let me ask you, be honest. Like, do you honestly think you guys think it was like, how good is going to look, that logo is going to look in a hat? Because I know I do. Mm -hmm. That's the first yeah. thing I look at for sure. Sure. Yeah, exactly. We'll look at it and we'll be like, all right, how is this going to look on a hat? Is it too big? Is it too, is it too long? I don't know. How is that really going to look in a hat? And that goes into a lot of it. Um, I would be remiss in not including Kevin, our, our, uh, our digital guru. <laughs> he does everything he'll run the, the the board ops he does all of that stuff but he comes up with some design work as well he did that's the, awesome the iron horses for us last year which was just phenomenal uh so he does a lot of work for us as well too wow oh, I, I, you know this thing it, it, just the thing was like you know i, I was just thinking about it's like you know you just said it like the digital board all right I was like, that's something that I didn't think about, right? Because I'm always thinking about it from the, the merchandising side, but you guys mm -hmm. also have to look at it. I was like, how is this going to translate into the, all your digital signage and, and all throughout the, the, the stadium? Right, exactly. You know, how is that going to look on a billboard that's outside the, the stadium? How is it going to look inside the stadium? Now, it's more than just how is it going to look on a shirt. Oh, man. Right? Yeah. I would have just been quick to get the hat, forget about everything else. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, let me get a hat, a pin, you know, <laughs> let's see what else is out there. Yeah. Uh, how do you incorporate um, uh, the the Copa brand with like uh, the food items and things like that? Like, uh, how does that look like, you know, on, on a doing doing a game? Sure. I mean, anytime you have a, a identity or a theme night, you want it to overtake the whole the whole night. So we'll, we'll have ethnic foods in the, the plaza and we'll sell them as soon as you walk in. Uh, there's usually uh, music playing, there'll be dancers, and then the food is right there. So that you smell that as soon oh. as you come in. So uh, uh, it, it is really an important part. As you know, food is a very important part of minor league baseball or in baseball and, or in life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so it's important to to really have that as well too. I know, ask that girl right there. You know, <laughs> talking to us right now. <laughs> question then, real quick. I don't know if we're gonna talk about this logo, but quick Go question. So, are you guys doing shoe fly pies? Actual shoe fly fly pies? I, I've never tried one, so no. Yeah, ab absolutely. There's a ticket package where you can buy a ticket and get a slice of shoe fly pie as you walk into the stadium. Wow. And if you don't have that ticket package, we'll have it available then too, just by the slice. We did the oh. same thing with strawberry pie last year. And when is this day again? That's <laughs> <laughs> you find it's, it's sometime next month, I believe. Oh, all right, Val. <laughs> let's go. Let's make a trip to Pennsylvania. Let's do this. That's awesome. Wow. That's and I amazing. love that logo. And I love the blue. It's, it's so pretty. Yeah, it all tied together really well. And Kurt Landis, uh, my GM, he's... I don't, know, I don't want to put this in a weird way, but he has a very corny sense of humor. And... <laughs> He wanted a fly with shoes. He's <laughs> like, we got to fly. I'm like, okay, Kurt, we'll, we'll get that done. <laughs> how, it, how, but how awesome is that, right? Like, you know, that your GM gives you the freedom to do things like that, right? So many of those quirky things that yeah. not necessarily fly in with other logos or other teams. Yeah, yeah. He, he fully embraces having fun, fully embraces merchandise, which not a lot of GMs will do. I mean, some will, but he really believes in merchandise and using it as an advertisement for your team. So Kurt is really great with all of that. I mean, I'm, see, I'm already here. Like, I got, like, two or three hats that I want to get right now, you know. <laughs> so, uh, it's like, you know, Hoagie Day, for God's sakes. You guys have one is Hoagie Day. Yeah. 
Val, yep. I know you, you should take a look at that one. That was pretty cool. <laughs> I need to right now. I can't but, get off the shoe fly page. But... <laughs> <laughs> right, but the fact that you have a, a, a fly with shoes, right? And it, it's not just regular shoes. To, they, to me, they look like, uh, like dress shoes, which yeah. makes it even better. Yeah, wow. kind of like, like, I don't know, maybe Pennsylvania Dutch shoes. I don't know. I would say something like that. That's amazing. But going wow. back to the hoagies, yeah, hoagies we did as a theme night last year or the year before. Mm-hmm. And that was just something I wanted to bring back. I saw it was going to be National Hoagie Day. I was like, why don't I do a, a merch release of just 100 hats, the limited edition hat release of hoagies. So mm-hmm. oh that's something that I have complete freedom to do. If I want to do... 20 hats a year i can uh I, i'll just i love the tricolor the tritone on that on right that so i'll do lots of different ones uh we have oh, it's sold out the red one is sold out on the 920 yeah jeez see but, uh july oh. 21st is national ice cream day so I'm like why don't i do a limited edition hat on july 21st or national ice cream day do you want to see it uh, yeah, yeah, I want to see it. <laughs> right, right here. No one's seen this yet. Oh, my God. So this oh, is exclusive. Favorite. I don't even think most of the people in the stadium have seen this yet. So this will be coming out July 21st, limited edition of 100, and it's going to be, speaking of pink. Oh, oh my goodness. The so this is flies. Yeah. <laughs> so bringing back our Jimmy's logo from a few years ago for National <laughs> Ice Cream Day with the gray oh. box. Oh, Oh course. Lord! The red, the pink on the back. Oh, the pink! Oh, that is so. Oh. <laughs> so that will be coming out on the twenty-first. You saw it here first, folks. And it's coming in a nine twenty, right? No, nope, just fifty-nine fifty for this one. So I'm gonna get a. I'm oh. gonna get a fifty-nine fifty. Keep okay. save me a seven and a quarter. I'm getting one of those. <laughs> yeah, don't kick me off the off the. Off no, the you're not getting kicked out, but I'm definitely want to get <laughs> one of those for sure. Wow, national ice cream! I'm day. speechless. What a treat that hat! Wow. Literally, yes. Yeah, nice I was just gonna say literally. <laughs> that too, yeah. <laughs> Oh my so, god! Yeah, so I have complete freedom like that. I'm gonna do. Uh, I think I'm gonna do Black Friday hat this year. I don't think anyone's ever done a hat on two hats. I'm gonna do two hats on Black Friday. Who two cares? Of- You're gonna get a discount on a brand new hat right away. Two of them. So I'm gonna do all kinds of things like that just to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that you get to do the freedom to do that, right? I mean, I you know you know what I appreciate that I appreciate about that is that. You are extending it throughout the year, right? Even when there's no baseball, you're like, no, we got to think of ways to merchandise to keep revenue coming into the team. Yeah, exactly. And just like, I know that there's collectors out there. Yeah, it yeah. really dawned on me, maybe the second, third year, and like, wow, we really sell a lot of these 5950s when we do theme nights. Uh, I wish we had more theme nights. And then I was like, why don't I just create my own? I don't need to, to wait for that. Oh. Cool. And I think that's when I the first one I did was National Hat Day. I did the, the purple, all purple fighting bacon hat. Um, <laughs> I was like, wow, that, yeah, this really works. So it does. Let's keep rolling with it. Yes, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, don't stop now. Oh my God, I'm definitely buying one of those hats. I know I'm a dad hat. I, that's my thing and everything. But I'm get. I gotta get me one of those. On my, I gotta get a hold of one of those. Those things are amazing. Uh, and those are, I'm sure those are limited edition, right? Yeah, they're only 100 made. That's oh. gonna be, I just do a, a limited edition run of 100. That's a legit 100. Someone asked me, he's like, oh, is it really like 150? I'm like, no, it's 100. I'm like, that's it. Wow. And that was something, you know, I really kind of learned that from working at Disney as well, too. Because we would have different drops throughout the year. It was limited edition Cinderella doll, limited edition Snow White doll. And it was during times where, you know, it wasn't as busy and you wanted to create extra revenue. And that's when I was like, I can do that here. It took me a while in the beginning, like, what can I do that was similar to that? And then that's when I was, that light bulb done. I was like, oh, yeah, everyone loves 5950 hats. Why don't I just do that? I, I mean, I was just going to say, you, you, the, the, the fact that you spent time in Disney, right? It really did just like, helped out with you for doing oh, this with the team yeah for sure there's so many 
parallels of just like just the guest service, customer service, uh, just talking to people and getting to know them and getting to know their needs, not being heavy salesmen, um, especially at season ticket holders, getting to really mm -hmm. know people. Uh, that really helps. And even at the like when people check out, you check out at the Disney store, or you check out the Disney parks, there's always like, hey, do you want to add on this? $40 blanket you just spent five dollars on a <laughs> whatever mm -hmm. we'll do that same thing but they're twelve dollar t-shirts so I brought that concept into our store as well too so during games we're selling twelve dollar t-shirts on top of whatever that transaction is to, to generate more revenue and that's something I brought from Disney as well too that's the way to do it right like peace for days <laughs> But that's what I'm saying, though. Like, and 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 I I think you you know like you're not you're one of like a few people that really understand the fact that like yes, this is a baseball team, but it's a business, right? Like, I mean, it's is merchandising is just as important as the product on the field. Yeah, and when you are merchandising, when you're putting product on the sales floor, you want to tell a story. You want to have like if you're gonna have jerseys you have to have that hat with it you have oh, to have yeah. those go with with it so it's all about storytelling with your merchandising as well too i mean hoodies right like, like you said like you know i know you're the happiest person in the whole park you, you're wearing you know that you know <laughs> right. when it's like cold weather but yeah like like who doesn't love a hoodie first of all i mean yeah. i got like a bunch of hoodies and i'm always looking to collect more right but it's like that's a you know like you're, you're just putting your name out there you yeah. know even today, it's like we're in the middle of summer. We we'll released the the Bethlehem logo. Like I brought a, a, a crew neck sweatshirt as part of the line. I'm like why not? Like yeah, people, people will wear it in the in the winter. Just because it's summer now doesn't mean they won't wear it. And we did sell a good amount of them already on day one. Oh uh, man! Oh, by the way, I, I got an idea, and you know, shut it down and tell me or that's a stupid sure. idea. <laughs> but with that national ice cream hat. Yeah, you should have a small bag of those, uh, and I'll say I'll say Jimmy's for my friend Paul Caputo. <laughs> you know that come, you know, with every hat, get a bag of Jimmy's. I mean, come on now. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, Jimmy sprinkles, whatever you want to call it. There's sprinkles. Delicious. I call them sprinkles. Yeah. It's yeah. I, I call them sprinkles too, but okay. I think that might be coming my Ohio roots. I, don't call, I was just gonna say that's an Ohio thing right there. <laughs> I don't. I don't call soda pop anymore. I got over that. <laughs> I don't yeah. Call it pop. I, I yeah, see I call it pop, you know. It, I'm here in North, North Carolina now, so it's like everybody is soda, you know. So I was like, ah, it's all right, whatever. Call it whatever you want. <laughs> Mike, I have a question. So since there are only a hundred of these, mm -hmm. you're going to debut them the day of. Yeah, so it'll be that that day. Probably I'll, I'll work with our marketing team, uh, National Ice Cream Day. I'm like, when do we want to release this? We'll do a, an email campaign. Uh, we'll send it out. National Ice Cream Day, limited edition hat, get yours. Oh. Oh. And then we'll combine that with social media, with X, Twitter, whatever you want to call it, Facebook, Instagram, wow. and we'll, we'll run wild with it then. Oh, awesome. Jim, do, I cannot wait for July 21st. <laughs> I cannot wait for July 21st. I'll give you a heads up when it's going to be. If it's one o'clock release, I'll let you know 12.50. Yeah, let me know because I'm, I'm be there like, you know, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> Because I want to get one of those. That thing is amazing. I, I'm in that, that. Let me ask you this, because that's something that I wanted to know. Um, when you work with your with your social media team on that, like you know, I'm sure you guys sit down and go through a whole new like you know plan of how to release things and all of that. How does uh, walk us through that? Uh, we have uh, it's a little less during game season, but we'll have mm -hmm. a weekly meeting, and there's there's a, a roadmap, there's a calendar. Where we talk about what needs to come out, what's going to be released, and when. Uh, there's just so much content, especially for our social media manager, Morgan. She's not only merchandise or food or what's going up in the game, but what happened in the game before, what stats are going on, what, you know, everything all encompassing. So it's really important just to have a, a really good roadmap ahead of time so we can follow that. Yeah. I'm so excited for you guys. I, you guys you don't <laughs> even know. Yeah, there is something coming. I, absolutely cannot talk about it but there is something coming within the next month that we've never done before oh. i don't think many people many other teams have done some, maybe one or two have some, did something similar but it, it's going to be something really special i'll be on the lookout i was just gonna say, I was <laughs> like i'm like i'm like gonna be like right there on instagram and twitter be like just let's go 
a lot more approvals than normal. It's going to be something really, really cool. I wow. believe the end of July. I'm not sure, but I would mm -hmm. say, you know, keep an eye out for something really cool coming up. So you guys usually like um, when you when you say because you like usually do like your five uh, releases for like the the baseball season. Yeah. Would that does that include everything else you guys do in the off season or that's just free range at that point? Like once the season is over, you still got to get approval by Major League Baseball. Yeah, anytime you want to do like any kind of theme, like they'll allow up to five. A lot of teams will do one. A lot of teams will do two. It's rare that anyone's gonna do five. I guess. If It'll you count, be you guys. Yeah, if you count COVID, it's seven really, seven releases. So, a lot of planning, a lot of approval from MLB. Um, they'll set very strict guidelines and, and deadlines. Mm -hmm. uh, and as long as we hit those deadlines, and they're they're nice enough to give us extension every once in a while. Uh, everything will be good, but they'll send everything to do it like a trademark search. As long as everything comes through clear, you know, we're ready to go then a couple months later. I cannot wait to see what you guys come up with. That's just crazy. Like, like, yeah, we're going to do this theme night for this weekend or whatever, you know? Yeah, it, it's a fun process. and It's just silly how we come up with ideas sometimes. Uh, when we did John a few years ago, I don't know if you remember that one, that the Philly slang term, John, it's mm -hmm. just a, a word that means anything. <laughs> like, oh yeah. You, I, I, I had, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And that just came out of a meeting where just like, we were throwing out ideas for salute to Philadelphia and someone's like the Sixers, this and that. And one guy is like, what about the John? I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, we know what the word was. Or I don't think Kurt knew at the time. I'm like, He's like, yeah, everyone in Philly loves John. I'm like, you're nuts. And then we're like, all right, let's try it. And it blew up. It was the <laughs> biggest release. It might have been our biggest release within the last six years. Uh, uh, it, it, that was just like an offhanded thing in a meeting. A guy was usually not even in the creative meeting. Just like, yeah, what about John? <laughs> My brother <laughs> likes that word often. So I, the fact oh, that yeah? it, it turned into an actual theme night. And yeah. when he's talking, he just uses that word like you know, the slang, and I'm just like, that's crazy. The fact that it's a theme night, that's so funny. Yeah, even ESPN picked it up here on ESPN and talking about John. That's awesome. This podcast is part of the Curved Brand Media Network. Here are some of the other members of Curved Brand Media. Hi, this is Kelly Robinson, the Minor League Nerd. My YouTube channel explores the history of minor league baseball teams. More than just stats, we delve into team lineage, sharing stories from current franchises to obscure one-year wonders. I'm Paul Caputo, and on the Baseball by Design podcast, I talk to minor league baseball teams, designers, and other super interesting people about what these minor league baseball logos mean. And I talk a little bit about ice cream helmets. What's up, Bucketheads? I'm Anna DiTomaso, and each week on the Baseball Bucket List podcast, I speak with a different fan about their favorite baseball memories, what the game means to them, and what's left to check off on their baseball bucket list. Hey everyone, it's Eric from the great state of Kansas. This is Johnny from the New Orleans Baby Cakes Memorial Museum. And we are the Earn Fun Average Podcast. Where we talk to a variety of guests about their love of baseball and have fun doing it. America, lower your standards. Average is what we do best. This is Patrick. And Corey. Of BaseballMapper.com. And we have made an interactive map to help highlight all baseball teams from the majors down to collegiate summer leagues. We want to bring you closer to baseball. So get on the site and find a team near you today. Hey guys, this is Patrick Larson from the Minor League Baseball Hat History Series. And in every episode, I go through the history of minor league teams through my personal collection of hats. You can find me on Twitter at, at @patlarson1. I hope you guys enjoy. Learn more about Curve Brim Media at curvebrimmedia.com. This podcast is part of the Curved Brand Media Network. Here are some of the other members of Curved Brand Media. Hi, this is Kelly Robinson, the Minor League Nerd. My YouTube channel explores the history of minor league baseball teams. 
with more than just stats, we delve into team lineage, sharing stories from current franchises to obscure one-year wonders. I'm Paul Caputo, and on the Baseball by Design podcast, I talk to minor league baseball teams, designers, and other super interesting people about what these minor league baseball logos mean. And I talk a little bit about ice cream helmets. What's up, Bucketheads? I'm Anna DiTomaso, and each week on the Baseball Bucket List podcast, I speak with a different fan about their favorite baseball memories, what the game means to them, and what's left to check off on their baseball bucket list. Hey, everyone. It's Eric from the great state of Kansas. This is Johnny from the New Orleans Baby Cakes Memorial Museum. And we are the Earn Fun Average Podcast, where we talk to a variety of guests about their love of baseball and have fun doing it. America, lower your standards. Average is what we do best. This is Patrick and Corey of BaseballMapper.com, and we have made an interactive map to help highlight all baseball teams from the majors down to collegiate summer leagues. We want to bring you closer to baseball, so get on the site and find a team near you today. Hey guys, this is Patrick Larson from the Minor League Baseball Hat History Series, and in every episode I go through the history of minor league teams through my personal collection of hats. You can find me on Twitter at at PatLarson1. I hope you guys enjoy. Learn more about Curve Brim Media at curvebrimmedia.com.